Hello everybody, good afternoon. Rose here. Tonight I'm reacting to Foodie Beauty's live stream called Breakfast Bees. So she did this about nine hours earlier and I will just pass you guys a warning. She is sitting in her room the entire stream eating. Although it's early in the morning for her, she's already very, very uh, far gone on the edibles. So she's talking about different things and I want to sit in and give my thoughts. So let's just go ahead and let me share the screen so you guys can see what I see. Hold on a second, I gotta make sure I share the sound as well. And there's Foodie, so you, you, you guys can see it for yourself. She's sitting in her room, she's gonna be eating a meal and I will apologize in advance that any more foodie eats during all of her streams. I wish there were a way to cut out the food eating portions, but she combines talking and eating. I, I would love to skip past all the eating. I'm not a fan. The way she eats is very gross and vulgar, not into that. But she's gonna sit there and you can, you're gonna tell right off the bat that she is wasted. First thing in the morning, fresh out of bed and she's wasted. And what does she do after getting wasted? She binges on food. So let's get to, let's get to, shall we? Matches my hair peak. Oh, hey. hey. Oh my God. What the hell am I wearing? My, <laughs> my shirt. Hold on a second. There's one part that I'm looking for. It's very important. Let me just go all the way back. Okay, let's start here. Oh my god, what the hell am I wearing? My <laughs> my shirt matches my hair peak. Oh hey, Summer Lynn, welcome. Um, welcome to very important beezers. Ready set bees. Welcome, new beezer. Hey, thank you for joining. Summerlin and Chef at Melissa Cook. I want that. What the fuck is that? Some kind of fruit something or other. I ordering from Cora's. Hi, Trixie. Exactly 94 LBs. Karen, Tara, Cruella, Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Okay. I froze it there. Do you know what that is? What she's holding up? That is a rotted banana. So she's sitting in her room. Not only is, is she surrounded by boxes and dirty clothes and, and everything else, she's got rotted food in her room. And she swears that her house does not smell bad. I I'm sorry, foodie. If you got even a little bit of food in your room rotting, it's going to make the whole room smell. And, and look at the state of that banana. It is completely rotted. That is so gross. Girl, no. I'm just going to clean up a little tiny bit before I eat because I'm grossed out by myself. Then just with you saying that, that must mean it's really bad. Because you're used to living in a pigsty, but I guess there's some levels of pigsty that you won't even touch. So if you're over there saying, I got to clean up because I'm grossed out by my mess, it must be really, really, really bad. So, just bear with me. So one thing I did notice, because I did watch a little bit of the stream earlier before I began my react, 
Foodie is giving all the telltale signs that she's been indulging in certain powdery party favors. You know, she's back to blowing her nose. You'll notice in this React video that her voice is deeper, like there's something going on with her throat. People who do cola, they get that cola drip in the back of their throat that bothers their throat. So we can always tell Foodie when you're doing the cola. We can tell because you're always blowing I was at your nose. To go long. You're not done talking. Be quiet, Foodie. We can always tell when you're doing the party favors because you're always blowing your nose. You're always picking at your nose, rubbing at your nose. You got that manic type energy. You're energetic, you're giddy, and you've got that deeper voice. That means you've been doing too much, entirely too much. Live. Um, I didn't want to press play or live until I stopped sneezing. Oh my God. Morning sneezes. Well, I have seen the comment in different places. A lot of people are wondering. If you do something like cola, how is it that you can do cola and be obese or overweight? That's really simple because for a time, the cola, it cuts out your appetite. But the moment you stop doing it, it returns with a vengeance. And do keep in mind that Foodie does have a problem with food, a severe problem with food. And what does she do when she wants to go uh, to sleep at night? When she's done doing what she's doing to give her energy all day, she's got to come back down the ladder. So she needs something to come back down the ladder, and that's what she uses the edibles for. But the problem with that is that the edibles stimulate her hunger. So she is someone that she's already obsessed with food. She's got a problem with food, and she keeps that ED monster in the cage all day when she's doing the cola. But then when she does the edibles, that sucker comes out raging and says, let's party. Let's go to town on the food. So she'll binge on the food. She'll eat thousands of calories in one sitting. That's how she's gaining weight. That's how. Yuck. I'm going to be recording some... Cleaning and packing. So, yeah. Stay tuned for that. We have a new. Shit. We have a new arc in the villa. So why can't we do a new arc now? I don't know exactly when you're moving, Foodie. Why can't you start the new arc now? Start doing healthy habits now. Start getting into those healthy habits right now, this moment, versus I'm going to wait till later. Because if you wait till later, you'll never do it. Why not start now? You know, get up out of that chair, clean that room, do some laundry. Start fixing yourself by doing things for yourself instead of just sitting there doing the same old thing. When you live with BB, you were indulging in your food habit and hiding pizza boxes and food containers all over the house. And there was a roach infestation. And then here you are at the villa. Remember when you moved into the villa, you said things are going to be different now. Oh, they were different because they actually got worse. Look at all the filth that you live in right now. You, do you think that moving into a new place is going to change you? No, it's just going to be a new space for you to fill up with more box mountains and more garbage. Because you got that garbage inside your head you haven't dealt with and you refuse to deal with. Get up out of that chair and do something now. Change yourself now. Now is always a good time. You can do it tomorrow, but why not start now? I mean, what else do you have to do in your day except change yourself? You get all the time in the world. Spend it wisely. Supposedly coming up, hopefully. This mansion situation? Yes. Um, 
Yeah, a curious development with the mansion. So Fudi was swearing up and down that she was practically already in the place. She was gonna give the people money. It was fully furnished, coffee bar, the whole nine yards. Well, I don't know exactly what happened with that, but now she's like, I'm gonna look at apartments. So what happened? I mean, was the mansion thing, was it a scam and you figured it out? Or was it a lie and you knew it was a lie? And just like with the men that you talk about, you tell a lie and then you know that at some point you have to prove that the lie is true and you can't do that. So you'll say something like, oh, we broke things off or I blocked them. You started talking about this mansion to be content for your channel for a little bit, but knowing that you're not going to move into it, now you're switching it around. So let's just tell a lie for a moment and have a topic of conversation. And then let's cancel it and come up with another lie rather than just tell the truth. If you're gonna move into an apartment, that's okay. There's no shame in living in an apartment. I'm sure everybody wants to live in a mansion, especially a fully furnished, really decked out mansion, but let's be real, that's not you. That's not your life. You're not that responsible. You would never be able to afford that. You don't have any money saved up. You would never be able to upkeep the place nor take care of the cats that are already there. It's okay to be a regular person and live in a regular apartment and have a regular life, Foodie. It's okay. No shame in it. Why do you always have to do too much? Why do you always have to exaggerate things? Just be yourself. Whatever that is, be yourself. You don't have to be a caricature of yourself and come on camera and be the train wreck and, and just do the most. You can calm down. Wait, sir, what is it you want to know? Oh, a single fry could stab you in the eye and probably kill a full-grown guy. All right, let's see. Hi, little queen. Hi, Beezers. Lindsay. further there's something I just want to show everybody okay so I just looked something up okay so you see all this nonsense going on right here with foodie and all these people in her chat you know what the VIBs hate the most other than the fact that reaction channels talk about Chantal and they think that we're a bunch of bullies and we're mean to her and we're just nasty they hate being called enablers. They say, we are members of her channel. They don't want to admit that they are enablers. Hey, VIBs, take a look at this. The definition of what it is to be an enabler. An enabler is a person or thing that makes something possible. A person who encourages or enables negative or self-destructive behavior in another. That, that's the definition. Look, I'm, I'm pulling it straight off the internet. Look, so you joined up on Foodie's channel and if she were not an addict, if she were not coming on YouTube strictly to fund her addictions and her obsessions, you would be members. You would be channel members or supporting regular content. But she's an addict with several addictions, not just one, several. And those of you over there, you're supporting each and every one of them. You're helping her to indulge in all of them. You are, sorry, you are funding this behavior. You're encouraging it by helping her keeping it all going. Let's talk about her addictions. 
for a moment, like how many there are. The first one, the most important one is her addiction for attention. She needs attention all the time. Of all of her addictions, that is the biggest one. And, and all of her addictions tie into each other. They're all closely linked together. But her number one addiction is attention. She's got to have attention. She hates to be ignored. She always wants to be in the spotlight. That's why she's always got to be on YouTube. Got to have her camera on from morning till night. She doesn't want people to forget about her or to stop talking about her. That's her worst fear. That's her worst nightmare not being in the spotlight or somebody else getting the spotlight. So the addiction for attention is number one. Then you have the addictions that are below it. You have the addiction for food, because she is an emotional eater. She's a binge eater, very severe in that degree. She's got an addiction for natter, uh, for drugs. So like there, there's so many things, shopping, you know, she's all about indulging all of her negative impulses. And anything that she likes turns into an addiction or an obsession. If there was one word that you could use to sum up Chantal, it would be obsession. Someone who is driven by obsession and indulging their obsessions from morning till night, indulging them all, engaging in them all, and doing it on a public forum. But if you're a VIB, because you are giving money to an addict with several addictions, you are enablers. You're okay with that. You're okay with this person getting on YouTube and doing self-harm content because let's be clear, that's what she's doing. She's getting on YouTube and she's hurting herself. And I know it might be hard for some people to just think about food being harmful. You don't think it's in the same ballpark as say drugs or alcohol, but trust me, it is. EDs are no joke. They are just as life-threatening and damaging and lethal as any drug or any amount of alcohol. They will wreck and ruin your life. They will consume your life if they get too much. So Chantal gets on camera and she indulges in drugs. She doesn't just do a few milligrams of edibles. She'll sit there and do a thousand, two thousand milligrams and get completely grained out to the point where she can't even speak. And she'll sit there and eat thousands of calories in front of everybody. But because everyone watching her, because maybe a majority of the audience, you're not thinking, well, if it's food, it's not a drug. It's OK. No, it's not OK. Because it's out of balance. Food is one of her drugs. And if she's on camera eating the way that she eats, she's not just eating a simple meal. She is binging on one of her drugs in front of all of you. And you're funding it and you're encouraging it. It's no secret that she's got a lot of feeders in her chat that are always talking about food to Chantal, always encouraging her to eat feeders. They just want their fetish fulfilled. They don't care if she's sick. They don't care if the food she's eating makes her sicker or she ends up in the hospital. They just want their fetish fulfilled. So while Chantal is on her side being selfish and getting on YouTube and indulging her in her addictions to the audience, and there might be some people in her audience that they got a problem with food themselves and watching Chantal might trigger them. She's being selfish by doing that. The people that are in her audience, the VIBs that are feeders, they're selfish too because they don't give a shit about Chantal. All they care about is her fetish. And if something happened to Chantal, they go on to the next person that's doing a mukbang and forget all about her. So all of you VIBs, like it or not, you are enablers. I don't care if you like Chantal. I don't care if you like her personality. You can like the addict and not fund the addiction. You can like them for who they are and not help them to hurt themselves. I'm just saying.
So there's a clear shot of her room. We're gonna go full screen for that. Look at that. I would have to get up and clean that. That would just make, anybody else looking at that, does that not make you anxious? Does that mess all around or not make you anxious? That just looks, that looks dangerous, doesn't it? That looks like the kind of mess that you cannot, there's no clear path to get to that chair. There's mess all around her. There's mess beside her and behind her, in front of her. She's streaming in all of that garbage, all of that rotting food. That would make me anxious. I, I wouldn't even come on camera if my room looked like that. I would take the time to clean it up before I turn that camera on, not just because I don't want the audience to see the mess, but because all those of you that you that you have a, a nice home, yes or no, if you have a messy home, it, it, you don't feel good in it. The more mess there is, the more it feels like a negative space. But if the house is clean or fairly clean, you feel better just because it's clean. You could be having the crappiest day, but if your house is clean, it, it helps you to feel better. So here's Chantal with box mountain behind her and box mountain beside her and stuff on the floor and garbage everywhere it's icky but it, it adds to the negative energy and keep in mind it's not just her that's in that house it's pete's it's those poor cats they gotta live in all that crap it just i can't with that mess right now it, there's no excuse for it her room is not that big it would take her all of like maybe an hour to clean it up. So baked beans. Hey, Lily. Hi. Cottage cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so Chantal had the nerve to call what she was eating an English breakfast. I, I'm not English, but I have seen videos on YouTube showing a proper English breakfast and it looked delicious. What she's eating is not an English breakfast. It's actually an insult to an English breakfast. What she's eating is a whole doggone buffet and she's daring to call it an English breakfast. It's not an English breakfast. I see. <laughs> Canadian eagle. What? Mm. Whatever. This is a mukbang. Sorry, I don't want to nip slip. You know, I'm. I don't want to hear her say that no more. I don't want to hear her say this is a mukbang because it's not. I confess, I've gone on YouTube and watched different mukbangers, and whenever I watch them, the videos that they do, they look really appealing. Like everything behind them looks nice and neat. They line up the food to where it looks really nice. Uh, there's this one mukbanger that I watch. She's really pretty. Um, she's Asian. And I, I can't pronounce her name correctly. It's spelled T-Z-U-Y-A-N-G. Tzang. How do you pronounce that? I am, if I'm mispronouncing it, forgive me. Tzang. But she's really cute. She's really pretty. She's really nice. And this girl is amazing. I mean, she's tiny, but she can put away amazing amounts of food. I don't know how she does it, but everything she eats looks really, really good, really fresh, really nice, you know, and, and she just sits there. She doesn't act gross. She doesn't flash her body. She just sits down and she has a meal and she doesn't eat at the speed of light. And I enjoy her videos. Unlike Chantal, I don't enjoy watching her eat. 
Chantal eats nothing but fast food. None of it looks appealing. It looks like heavy, greasy, oily, deep fried slop. This is not a mukbang, Chantal. Mukbangs are things that people do on YouTube to be creative, to showcase their love of food and the food they eat. You want to eat it too. I don't want to eat what you're eating right now. I don't. Hey guys. I really feel like fucking eating every part of, of pork. I'm just gonna fork from the kitchen, you beezer. Yeah. Mmm. Sausages. Hold on. You know, she wanted to do a mukbang with this meal. What she could have done was take all of this food, put it nicely on a plate where everybody can see it, you know, laid out real nice, and sit down and eat slowly and enjoy the meal. But she's got everything in those messy, sloppy, cheap takeout containers, ripping over the bag. This is not a proper mukbang. This is her having a binge. And giving, the name, giving it the name mukbang because Terms of Service says you cannot do binging on YouTube. So this is, this is a binge, but just to skate around YouTube, she's calling it a mukbang. Like anymore, all we see her do is binge on camera. This is not a mukbang. This is not a proper mukbang, Chantal. This is a binge. I used to binge eat, girl. I'm looking at you. It takes one to know one. You are binging. You're binging. As well, combine the pork products. Serious question, Chantal, why do you eat like you got somewhere to go? Like, why are you in such a hurry with your eating? There's nobody else around you. Nobody's going to take that food away from you. Why can't you slow down and enjoy the food? Like, what is that? Are you catering to the feeders? Is that part of the feeder fetish? They want to see you eat like it's your last meal? Slow down. What the fuck is this? Toast? Where's the butter? No. Oh. And whoa, cool. So I just thought we would enjoy our breakfast together, guys. She said she was coming back, but oh. <laughs> I fucking knew this would come in handy. I knew it. What Willy Roy? What do you have for breakfast? This is this is nothing shy of an English breakfast, Willy. That is nothing like an English breakfast. Those in my audience that have eaten an English breakfast before, does that look like an English breakfast to you? As I, I, I watch videos with the proper English breakfast. You have is it ham, you've got sausage, you've got the baked beans, you've got toast. Uh, where is the blood pudding? You don't have any blood pudding. Where is the mushrooms? Where is the tomatoes? That's not an English breakfast at all. No. It looks like slop to me, big time slop. No, don't you agree, mate?
Since when is cheese part of an English breakfast? <laughs> Excuse me, Danny Pickles. It doesn't look most appetizing, does it? Yeah, it looks like crap. It is good, though. Chantal, if somebody put ketchup on garbage, you would eat it and say it tastes good. I mean, we we know that you eat Natter's cooking, and he's not the best of chefs, so you have zero taste buds. <laughs> Bacon sounds like pop rocks. You know why? I asked for it. On the computer. I'm trying to get past the parts where they're eating the most, y'all. I'm trying. Um, I'm having to face doing some things that I've been putting off that I just... Oh. Torture. So... How is it torture if you hadn't even started doing anything? Where is the torture? It's not like you started doing something and you got exhausted and said, oh, this is too much. You haven't even started. You've done nothing to prepare for your move. You keep putting it off and putting it off and putting it off. And you know what's going to happen, Chantal? You're going to get down to the 11th hour and be freaking out because you have way too much to do and not enough time to do it. Moving is an intense, long process that's why people normally they they plan it out and they give themselves plenty of time because they know how long it takes and what a pain in the butt it's going to be you haven't even started instead of cleaning up the garbage around the villa what are you doing you're throwing garbage on the floor you're sitting in your room getting high and eating you haven't even started with doing even half the things you need to get done I thought love a piece of wheelchair. Yeah, bad idea. Now I want to go back to bed for a couple of hours. Bowl of sunshine. Oh, Sarah. So this person, Danny Pickles, says, Chantal has been numbing her feelings with crap food forever. Love you, girl. I've been doing the same for years. Let's get out of this cycle together. Danny, if that's what you're doing to numb your pain, as someone that I was a binge eater and I'm in recovery from my ED, don't wait on Chantal. To get better get better for yourself now because she's never going to get better you should take care of your health don't look at chantal and wait for her to change herself before you change yourself using food as comfort as love as a coping mechanism is never good it just isn't if you've got some kind of trauma or pain inside of you and you're using food to cover it up or escape from it, it, it's like using the wrong medication for the wrong problem, okay? That's like you try to use, you know, the Bengay ointment to cure a headache, you know, wrong, wrong thing, wrong problem. Food is physical. Pain and trauma are emotional. They're mental. It's inside your mind. 
So it doesn't matter if you put whatever it is you put in your stomach. Your body's physical, food is physical, pain and trauma are emotional and mental, and food can't fix that. It's not its job. The only job that food has is to give us energy to go out into the world and do things. That's it. That's its only purpose. It's not meant to fix any kind of pain or bad memories or trauma or loss or mourning somebody who might have died. It's just meant to give us energy to go out and be productive in the world. So if you're waiting on Chantal to fix her life before you fix yours, don't wait on her. Don't. Oh, yeah, Trina. So Board Panda says, same Danny Pickles, don't know how to stop. So there's two people in Chantal's chat. They're saying they have a problem with food. Here's how you get it under control. You get therapy, you get counseling, you talk to somebody. The first step is saying, I have a problem. Don't be in denial about it. Say, I do have a problem with food. You can't be in denial about something like that. You have to admit to yourself, you've got a problem and it's over your head. You're, you're stuck on that roller coaster. You need help to get off. Second thing you can do is really think back to when the problem with food started. Like go all the way back in your mind to when did it first start? Like what triggered it? Something happened. A lot of addiction starts with pain, like something or somebody hurt you, and that's what sets you on that path. Something hurts you so much that you went to something to escape from it or to cope with it, and you used food as a coping mechanism. So if food is your only source of comfort or love, you got to go back and figure out what hurt me. What caused me so much pain that I went to food to fix it? Although food is not fixing it. And then you can sit down and write down what your triggers are. Like other times of the day or night that trigger you to eat. Like do you have rituals that revolve around food? Like you sit down in front of the TV and that's when you eat. Or right before bed. Or if you're talking to a certain person or in a certain place and that gets you upset. And that's when you eat. Find out all your triggers so you can be self-aware of them. And again, go get therapy and counseling to help with that. It's good to talk to somebody. There's no shame if you've got a problem with something and reaching out for help. Hi, Paul B. You said you work in finance. I seriously don't remember that, Lindsay. Lindsay, I'd imagine I'm the most annoying person to work with ever. You know, I want to say one further word about EDs. And I promise I'll shut up. So this is just my opinion. I think that one of the reasons why Chantal cannot get away from food or drugs is because her life is lacking in purpose and happiness. If we are, we're people, we are human. We are motivated by what makes us happy. What gives us pleasure? Are we not? So if you're someone and there's absolutely nothing else in your life that makes you happy, that gives you joy, that gives you pleasure, except for that one thing, like say food or drugs, that's the only thing you have to look forward to, the only thing that makes you feel good. The only thing. Of course, you're not going to want to give that up because there's nothing else that gives you joy. So, Chantal, if she wanted to get better, she would have the monumental task of 
finding something or a bunch of things that gave her as much joy and happiness as food or drugs and natter. That's going to be a big task for her if she ever wanted to get better, is finding something or a few things that gave her the same amount of happiness as those negative things, and that way she can let go of those negative things, but she's not looking for those things. She keeps going back to the same familiar corner with all those negative things. She's not interested in change. She's not interested in breaking cycles. She's not interested in breaking habits. She's focused on continuing the bad habits and the negative lifestyle. And I don't feel sorry for Chantal because she has options. There are people that can out there that can help her. She's not interested. So she can yell and scream at the reaction channels and saying, we're mean to Chantal, we bully Chantal. No, ma'am. We're just over here telling the truth. And we are not as invested in your obsessions as you are. What you are obsessed with, we are not obsessed with. So we have a different point of view. Sorry you don't like it, but you did choose to put your obsessions and your addictions on YouTube and monetize them. Anyone in the chat who's worked with me and can vouch for that? <clears throat> Sorry for being gross. I'm not trying to. Yeah, you are. You're catering to the fears. Okay, let's try the eggs. I'm freaking out. Ah! All right, here we go. And get past some of this eating. Okay. Oh, here, eat. I guess they're not a cure all. I haven't been putting in the work either. Nope. This is embarrassing because I don't have a napkin. Sorry. I'm going to go shower after. No, you're not. You know what I mean? No. No. I don't know. This is really salty. I have to, we have to get back to the walks. You know, like, I don't give a shit, I just, <laughs> like, I literally took, I was up at 5.30, about 5, heard Pete's turn his lights off, laid in bed, and I was like, am I going to go back to bed? Oh. Only slept for a few hours. How am I awake this early? I hate this shit. And then <clears throat> BBJ must have noticed I was awake. I hear her come in the room. I get up, go feed the cat. Did you hear her cry or is that my chair? Oh, my sweetest angel. You know what I mean? So I had my door closed because I don't want Pete's to. You saw me get two cases yesterday. Yeah, after the cats had been without food for like 24 hours. Which is ridiculous because you order takeout every single day. So why can't you order food at the same time you order your food? You're very concerned about making sure you get fed, but your cat's not so much. And yes, I know they had dry food, but BBJ is an old cat. She's got dental problems. She cannot eat the dry food. So all she can eat is the pate from what I understand because it's soft enough. But Foodie doesn't care enough to have that in the house. So she went on her little date, 
And Pete's did a live stream saying the cats don't have food. Then she tried to turn around and say, well, he just don't know where the food's at. But at the same time, she was going to get canned food. So which is it, foodie? There was food in the house and Pete's did not know where it was at or you guys were out. And that's why you bought some. Sounds like the, can't, the cats ran out of food again. And this is not the first time that's happened. You always make sure you got enough food for your mom, but buying 60 to $80 worth of cat food is too much for you. And by the way, guys, I, I was reading somewhere that she said she spends $200 a day on takeout. Do the math on that. That's what, $6,000 a month for food? That's insane if that's true. It's insane. You could pay the rent for like three people in a one bedroom apartment for that much. She spends that on food. That's, that's entirely too much, entirely too much. Six grand for food, foodie. And you wonder why you run out of money. Between the food and the edibles, no wonder you're broke. That and Natter. So she now, right now, has fresh food. <clears throat> Okay, so what she just said, she goes, right now they have fresh food. Anybody who says that, that's a big indicator that they're not really good about keeping food around. Because otherwise she'd say, well, they always have food. They always get fed. No, she's saying they have food right now, meaning that they often run out. Shouldn't be happening, Chantal. If you're spending $100, $200 a day in takeout, you can get some doggone cat food for those pets. And if not, give them to somebody who will feed them. That's the kindest thing you can do. You are vile to the core. You're evil. You want to wreck and ruin your life, go for it. Who could stop you? But if you're in a place in your life where you're having trouble doing things, you don't want to do things for yourself. You're letting everything go. You are surrendering to the I don't care attitude. Release those babies to the care of somebody who will care. Let them go to somebody who will do what needs to be done. Because your head is not in that place. All you care about is running around chasing random men and going to hotel rooms. Give those babies to someone will do right by them especially bbj she's over 20 years old she's old she's sick she needs help and if you're not going to do it let somebody else do it at least have a shred of kindness and let that happen no hi jenny I'm talking about right now, Flavera. Yesterday, yeah. At one point, at one point they had, I gave them the rest of the chicken stew in the morning. And then they did it too. So Flop Era says, of course, Peach would rather let BBJ starve than leave the villa for five minutes to get food. Well, I was yelling and screaming about that the other night. Y'all remember? When I saw those comments on her video, I'm like, there are two people in the house. Is there nothing in the house that he can give the cats a can of tuna? Maybe cook some chicken or something? Surely there was something in the house he could have made. Or is he and Chantal, they both have phones. There's apps for food, there's Uber Eats, there's Postmates. They deliver groceries as much as they do fast food. Could nobody place an order and have food delivered? That could have happened. Or if there was a store nearby, he could have left to go get some food. Why is it that there's two adults in the house and those, those cats are going hungry? That makes no sense to me. 
coconut, and they always have crunchies and water. Okay. Oh no. Get it, get it, get it. So Flop Aaron says, BB Jake doesn't eat crunchies due to her dental problems. We know this as a fact. Yeah, we do know it as a fact. And here's another one for those that don't know. The vet told Chantal on the phone months and months ago, BB Jake needed to go back for dental surgery. That was months ago. And it still hasn't been done. And here's Chantal spending a hundred to two hundred dollars a day on takeout. I don't know what it would cost to get BBJ surgery, but if she cared about her cat, she would make it happen. You know, for, for the, her sake and for her health. Just pay the money, get it done. But she's too busy shoveling food into her maw and making her feeders happy. She's got the money to get the surgery done, but she's not doing it. But on top of not getting the surgery, she won't even be kind enough to keep soft food in the house for BBJ. It's just, it's neglect and it's abuse. Do better on yourself. Do you think that's a really, do you think that's really addictive like people say it is? You know what I mean, crisscross? UBJ doesn't eat crunchies due to her dental problems. Yeah, she's going deaf. I have to go really loud. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not laughing at her, but... When humans and animals live a really good life, I don't feel sad when they pass away. Yeah, but the problem is she's not living a good life. She's not living a good life at all. She's got an owner that barely gives her attention, that shoves her away when it's time to give love and attention. You give attention and love to Sam. Sam is the favorite. Everybody knows it. Whenever BBJ wants attention, you don't give it to her. And BBJ, like Sam, is living in a filthy, disgusting, smelly house with rotten food, fruit flies, garbage. You're so busy running around chasing men, Chantal, and being in front of the camera, you don't care for your pets properly. The litter box doesn't get changed. You're not taking her to the vet. She's got dental problems. You got to know that her teeth hurt. How is she living a good life? In, wh in what way is she living a good life? You're over there and you have the audacity to make the money that you make on YouTube. And you don't have proper food for those babies. They'll sit there and go without food at the same time the order takeout and eat food right in front of them. How dare you? How dare you? They need more attention and love and medical care and food than you care to give them. And I also want to remind everyone of something that Chantal said. She actually said on live stream that she was not going to take her cat to the vet just because it pissed off her haters, her words. Imagine being so vile and black hearted, evil hearted. Just so dark inside that just to, just to make strangers on the internet angry, you won't take your pets to the vet like they need. You won't take them to the groomers. You're so focused on pissing off your haters that you deny your pets love and food and medical care. I, I have never heard of that in my life, someone doing that, but Chantal does. 
That's why she doesn't need those cats. She should give them to somebody else. That's sad. Because, well, I've trained myself not to be too sad. Because I know I gave BBJ a really good life. And she's lived to be very old. And the queen, just like the queen. So what's your attitude? I've done enough for you, so I don't have to do anything for you now. I gave you 20 years and you're living with me and, and, and that's all you deserve? No, she deserves more. Queen, she's lived to be very, very old. And she could live a few years long if you took care of her, dumbass. When she was the queen of fucking England. So that people should be celebrating her life, you know? Celebrate, we're going to celebrate BB June's. <laughs> I love you, sweetest angels. Oh. Yeah, Chantal Stalker. <laughs> Hope he doesn't usually smite. He's a nice bloke. Yeah, I know he doesn't usually. So, hi. I don't normally. This is laughable. Somebody in your chat saying you could always work as an insult comic or a humiliation dominatrix. She would fail at both. She would fail as an insult comic because insult comics have to be very quick witted and on their feet and intelligent and know how to make people laugh. They got to know how to read people on the spot. She don't know how to do that. Y'all remember all of those uh, reacts that she tried to do to Charlie Gold and FFG? She failed. And as far as humiliation dominatrix, Chantal likes to be humiliated. I think she honestly has a kink and a fetish for that. And for anybody out there that has that kink and fetish, I'm not shaming you. I'm just saying she likes to be humiliated. I mean, that, that's her deal. She gets on YouTube and she acts this way because she wants people to yell and scream and say things to her. And I honestly think she gets off on it. So she couldn't be a dominatrix especially a humiliation dominatrix because she wants to be on the other side of it. I go fucking live at this hour. Do we have <laughs> sniping traffic right now? <laughs> I mean, do we have not sniping? Do we have streaming traffic right now? So Chantal, I'm confused. First, you say, I don't want anybody sniping me. You're all a bunch of content thieves. Why don't you do your own thing? You complain if people snipe you. You say they're stealing your views and it's not fair. But I guess Pulpy was sniping you. And you're over there saying, are we getting extra views? Are we getting extra traffic? Which is it? You don't want people to snipe you or you do. Or are you just trying in your head to think about, will it benefit me? Should I let it go on? Yeah, you should let it go on. You can thank the reaction channels for keeping you relevant. I mean, we've had to work really hard just to make you interesting. Trust me, it ain't easy. You don't make it easy. Uh, what's a coward move? Me? Let's see it, I'm coming, my sweetest angels of the tents. Wait, wait, wait. I'm coming. She's losing her shit. You would adopt me, PJ. I would adopt her and Sam and give them the best life ever. I take care of my cat, Booger. My roommate has two cats. I feed them. I take care of them as well as he does. You know, I would take in two more. If I could give him the best life ever. BBJ. BBJ is fine. I just have to go and cuddle with her in bed right now. 
She's losing her shit. Um, so guys, ooh, another motel piece. Danny Pickle says, love you, babe. You deserve a real man. Sorry, I disagree. I disagree. Why, why does she deserve a real man? What has she done to deserve a real man? I, I would like an answer to that question. What has she done to deserve a real man? She's not a nice person. She's completely toxic. She's wrapped up in her addictions and obsessions. Even if she had the best possible guy in front of her, is she set up to know how to deal with that real man? She had BB, she had Pete. She cheated on both of them. She left Pete in financial ruin. She wrecked his life. And he's been a mess ever since. And BB kicked her out before she wrecked his life. What about Chantal deserves a real man? For her to have a real man and know what to do with a real man, she has to be a real woman, standing on her own, taking care of her own stuff, being a boss bitch. She's so far removed from that. She's not even close to being halfway there. She is a cheater. She's a liar, manipulator. She gets around guys and she tries to find a way to control them. What guy wants to get involved with a woman who has several addictions? Their life is a mess from top to bottom. Their finances are a mess. Always broke, despite the fact they make money. I mean, she has all the red flags that would keep a man far, far away. She doesn't know how to behave. She's vulgar, got a horrible reputation. She doesn't need a real man right now. What she needs to do is to learn how to be a strong, independent woman taking care of her business. But she's not interested. So an honest, good man, she doesn't deserve that. No. I'm coming. She's rubbing her face on my desk. My God. You know what's really sad? Chantal's running around town with these random dudes looking for love. When she's got love in her own house. BBJ and Sam, they are there, there for her. They are her constant. And they don't ask much. They just ask to be loved and taken care of. She's always talking about unconditional love. Well, pets give unconditional love. So she's got unconditional love literally right next to her and she could care the fuck less because it's not a human, it's a cat. She doesn't see that as being important or worthy and it is important and worthy because pets are a gift. So she's got love in her house, real love, couldn't care less about it. But yet she's gonna run around town with these random dudes and go to dingy, sleazy motel rooms for hookups. That's what she wants to do with her time. Chantal, you'll never find the kind of love with a guy that you'll find in your pets. Your pets are offering loyalty and love. You need to take care of that. You need to value that. Give it the same value as you would some guy on Tinder. Give it the same amount of attention as you would Natter. Spend as much effort as you do with your pets as you do running back and forth to Montreal or going to sleazy motel rooms to do sleazy only thing and pictures nobody cares to see. So what's what's the goal then? <laughs> All the opposite of that. Just because he likes passionate sex doesn't mean there's any real connection. No, I don't want a connection with him like on a heart level. Just on a sexual level. With him. Same thing with I feel like with him, like I feel like Mr. Coffee, like ooh, like a man when I crave a man 
the touch of a man. That's what I crave. Those beans were good. I like beans. And you know what? At least now I know. Because you know what? Unfortunately, most people, be, you don't know you're dealing with a narcissist until it's too late and you've dealt with a narcissist. You're a narcissist. What are you talking about? That's the only way you know. So, I'm, you know, I guess at least I'm thankful for that. That at least I can say I have that experience, I guess. And I, I know what to look for now that that's it. There's a lot of men who are willing to, to take you out and have a good time. Don't settle. See, that's the problem. You have been settling. You've not just been settling with men. You've been settling with yourself. You settle. Instead of working to have a good life, you're settling for this life. And you have a choice. You're the captain of your own ship. You have the key to the, any door of opportunity that you want to open in your hand. You're choosing, you are choosing not to use it. Instead of walking through doors and seeing what's inside, you're sitting in a room and just sitting there, doing nothing, being nothing, having nothing. You know, your content is toxic. It's boring. It's dark, Chantal. But I think there is a little bit of something positive that comes from you doing your videos every day. Just one thing, one positive thing that can come from your videos is every time you do a live stream, every single time, you are showing people what comes when you live a life without purpose, without meaning, without structure, without discipline, Living a life completely out of control, giving into all your impulses, giving into your addictions. This is the result. You are a living, breathing, walking, talking example of indulging in the seven deadlies and living a life with no structure. What happens when you do that? What happens when you live a life like that? You are the cautionary tale. People can look at you when they see the example that you're putting it out on YouTube and say, I don't want to live like that. I don't want to be that person. So I'm going to live a much different life. Maybe that's the one positive thing that everybody can take away from your live streams, from all this darkness you put on YouTube. They can look at you and say, I don't want to live a miserable, sad, lonely, toxic, negative life like that. So I'm going to live life completely different. Put exactly what you want in your dating apps. That's what I've learned to do. As I've gotten older as a woman, I've learned to assert myself a lot better, a lot more. Uh, what I want <laughs> when it comes. But, but you haven't, though, because you meet guys on dating apps and you tell them, all I want is a hookup. And then you get your feelings all mixed up in it. And the next thing you know, you are blowing up their phone with text messages, with phone calls and saying, where are you and what are you doing? And why aren't you seeing me? And why aren't you calling me back? And I'm gonna block you. So you're putting out one picture of what you want and then you're changing it in the middle of the game. You can't do that. So dating, so it's not like I'm like, no, I don't want help because I, I, you know. You don't want help. You don't want it. Just be honest. You don't want it. It's there. You don't want it. You're not ready for it. I've been watching Chantal for a long time, y'all, and I, am, I have yet to see that moment of clarity break through the wall where she says to herself, I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm going to change things. She doesn't want to break the wall. She wants that wall up. Because as long as the wall is up, she doesn't have to change. She doesn't have to put in the work. She doesn't have to do anything. She is very complicit in her laziness. As long as she's got enough money to buy her edibles and her food and go see Natter, she thinks everything's okay. For someone like Chantal, it's going to take 
losing that safety net for her to change. She is that person that she will not change unless she absolutely positively has to. I acknowledge that I do. I just don't know what I'm just taking my time seeking the right form. Chantal, it's been over a year. How much more time do you need? Wait, guys, I don't want him to. Okay, you know what? I'm done with her. Let's go on to the comments. Lana Renee says, all I need to do is vacuum and mop. Chantal, she sits amongst trash bags, takeout containers, and rotting food, cardboard boxes, piled to the ceiling, old dry cat turds, and cat piss. Shaking my head. You know, she isn't wrong, Chantal. Your house is disgusting. It would need a cleanup crew to get that place in order, and it might take them days. It's going to take more than a mop and a broom. Trust me. Trust and believe on that. Walmart lip gloss says the refusing to clean is like the refusal to take the cats to the vet. It's beyond pathetic. You know, I don't know if she's keeping her house dirty just to make people talk or to make everybody angry or upset, but it's it just seems ridiculous to me to be so focused on people that don't like you or talk about you that you're going to refuse to change your life for the better. What kind of thinking is that? It makes no sense. Queen of Awesome says, for someone who allegedly moving, you sure keep dropping trash all over the floor and continue to refuse to clean any of it or pack anything. Do I smell BS? You know, I hope that she gathers enough money to get some people to come in there and clean the place before she moves out. At least do the landlord a kindness and not leave this, that place completely trashed. Cake says, I've never seen someone who has so many blessings in life be so ungrateful for said blessings. If she focused on the positives in her life, cats, making amazing money on YouTube, family, her life could turn around. It's honestly really unbelievable when she has no real issues in life other than the ones she creates. Chantal has been given a plethora of blessings and she could take the brass ring and run with it. But she'd rather sit still with the brass ring right beside her and not grab onto it. So that's why I don't have any sympathy for Chantal. When you see someone that they cannot sit on camera and say, well, my life is hard and I don't know what to do and I have no opportunity to change it. If, if that were the situation, I would have a bit more sympathy. But I'm watching Chantal and I'm reacting to Chantal. And all she's got to do is just put things in play. And when you see someone like that, that they could easily make their life really happy and they're literally choosing not to, I don't have sympathy. I, I just don't. I really, really don't. And see. Uh, Willow Cat says, speaking as a person who was lucky enough to have a cat for 18 years, his death hit me harder than I could have ever imagined. He had a wonderful life, but that's not what I thought about when he died. The bond we had was when we the bond that we had was gone. All the love that I had for him didn't die with him. That's what's so hard about an old pet passing away. It's going to hurt you more than you could ever know, Chantal. You know, right now, Chantal's very blasé about the health of her pets, about how they live, how they eat, if they eat. She doesn't care if they live in a nasty, dirty, disgusting house. If something happened to BBJ, she's going to have that moment where it's going to hit her later and she's going to cry. She's going to bawl her eyes out. She's going to have so much remorse and regret in her heart for not doing more, for being a better pet parent. But by then it's too late. But I honestly, sincerely hope that she has a shred of kindness in her and she gives the cats to somebody who will take care of them because they really do deserve at least a good end of life. 
They spent two years with Chantal in that house living through absolute hell. I wish Chantal would just have a wake up adult moment and say, I am not in a position to take care of my cats. I can't even take care of myself. So I'm going to be the adult and give them to somebody who will take over and do it for me so I can focus on myself. I wish she would have that moment. Safety offices, $200 a day on takeout is crazy. Yeah, it is. It is. Here's the scary part. A while ago, Chantal said that she spent $3,000 a month on food. Now she's up to $6,000. So her food intake, her, her the money that she's spending on takeout has more than doubled. Insanity. Insanity. And you know what? If Chantal were not monetized on YouTube, if she had a regular job making regular money, she would probably be a lot healthier because she couldn't afford a plethora of edibles. She wouldn't be able to eat takeout all day. It would probably slow her down from gaining so much weight and getting high all the time. She would have to change her ways if she didn't have the YouTube money. And if she indulges because she does have it. Patricia says, BBJ cries all the time because she hates walking and living in her own waste in your raw garbage. I, I can't think about how those cats are living right now. It's too upsetting. It, it makes your heart hurt. It, it makes you angry. When you're a pet parent and you see someone who calls themselves a pet parent acting like that, it pisses you right off. Especially when that person cannot say, well, I don't have money to do something. I I don't have the money to take him to the vet or buy him fresh litter. She's got it. She just doesn't do it because she's a neglectful, awful pet parent. Point blank, period. Uh, Keisha says, hey, Chantal, your meds won't work like they're supposed to if you use cannabis and alcohol. You have to cut that off completely for the depression, anxiety meds to work. Good luck. I don't know if she is taking anxiety meds. I know she was on them, but how could she do them now if she's not been to the doctor to get a script? And you're right. If she's on any kind of medication, if she's doing the alcohol and the edibles, that pretty much cancels that out. So she needs to choose one or the other. She can't do both. If she's doing both. Pam says, did anybody notice how attentive she is to Sam? But she is sort of mean to BBJ. She cleans, cleans a desk off for Sam to jump up. But she tells BBJ to go away. She is just so mean to BBJ. I'm going to put a thought out there. I'm going to ask you guys what you think about it. You can leave it in the comments. I think perhaps the reason why Chantal favors Sam is because Sam is a male cat. And BBJ is a female cat, and, and Chantal hates anything else that's female. She has no love for anything else that might be female. Sam is a male cat. He's also big and chubby, like her. So she is more inclined to, to Sam. And BBJ is not only female, but she's a smaller cat. So, I mean, I don't know what it is. I don't know exactly why Chantal gives more love to Sam than BBJ. I'm just speculating. BBJ is a female cat. We know that Chantal hates other females. So maybe that could be the reason why. But whatever the reason is, if she is purposely neglecting BBJ, it's wrong. And if she's if she's not feeling any kind of love for BBJ, she needs to let her go. It's time. Uh, Shady Nasty says, are you really planning to, on letting your indoor cats just go outside of this new house they're not familiar with? You won't see BBJ again if you do. Uh, you know, I can't get inside Chantal's head, but if Chantal is vile and monstrous, which she is, if, if, if the cats get outside and and they wander off, then she'll be able to say, well, they I just lost them. They went outside and never came back. And maybe that's her way of getting rid of them. I don't know. I hope she doesn't let the cats outside, especially BBJ, because she's old. She's elderly. If she gets in front of uh, a cat outside that's bigger, stronger, younger, 
and they get into a fight, it's not going to be pretty for her. You know, she's old. She needs to be inside where she can be protected. Uh, Carrie Miller says, foodie, in a week you've gone from taking edibles only at night to saying no more wheelchairs to waking up stone. In other words, you're losing control. Time to really reflect. She's not going to reflect. I wish she would, but she's not going to do it. But you're right. She is out of control. I don't know what's put her on this downward spiral, but it feels like she's on one. And it, she's spiraling faster and faster. She, I wish somebody would step in and, and stop this. I, it's, it's getting to be too much. Uh, Carrie Stevens says, what makes me mad is that she chooses to live this way, to be a bottom feeder in life and a drain on health care, but she gets paid to do it, so why would she stop? She won't until idiots stop paying to be a member and stop subscribing to her. Only then when she's penniless may she change. That's if she lives that long. I said that. You know, she's got her safety net with YouTube, and she's not going to change until that safety net I gets pulled out from under her. Like she's one of those people that she's not going to change unless she absolutely positively has to, that there is no other path to take. Uh, Kimmy K says, animals don't cry for no reason. She's trying to tell you something is wrong. I'm looking for animal welfare places in Canada and contacting them. I'm in Austria, that's all I can do. You know what, Kimmy, I I understand you getting upset. Looking at BBJ and Sam every day makes me upset, but here's the thing. Animal services have been to that house more than once and they haven't been taken away. I don't know why, but they haven't. You know, it's one of those things where Chantal's the owner, she has to do something. She has, to, she has to make that responsible decision to do right by them. And honestly, she should. Oh, let's see everybody talking about the food. Oh, Lord. Mad Pooper says BBJ is crying because she's not getting enough food. Hard food is is too hard for her to eat. You've said several times that she only eats the gravy from the chicken stew. So BBJ is living on treats and gravy. Oh my God. So sad she doesn't have much longer and you won't go get that cat some pat pate. You think it's cute to only buy chicken stew. Sam likes chicken stew, but BBJ doesn't. It's so frustrating you push everything to the side. You never take care of anything, even the easy stuff. I, I I don't want to think about that poor animal just living on treats and, and, and gravy. I, I'll lose my mind over here. I, I can't. That, that, that hurts. Just thinking about that. Let's see. Everybody talking about the food. Uh, JS says, you're not an entertainer. This would require you to be entertaining. Without your chat and reaction channels, you're nothing. True words were spoken. Okay, so that's some of the comments. I know that the react is a bit longer than it normally is, but I hope you guys have enjoyed this React video. If you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. Thank you very much for being here and have a good day. Bye-bye.